What's up everybody? This is Gray Man here. I hope everybody is doing well today. Uh, today we're going to dive into 21 helpful food preps for new preppers. Now, I use the word new preppers, but some people like uh, experienced preppers or you know people on their way to, to becoming prepared. Uh, this list may also be helpful to you folks or give you some insight to some information that you might not be aware of or whatnot. Now, I know also some folks, and this is what I'm hoping, is some folks down in the comments will add to this list uh, because this is just 21 things that I find uh, to be you know, helpful for new preppers. Now, hopefully you folks in chat uh, will drop some great other additional information for folks to read through. Uh, so that being said, feel free to add to this list and drop comments below. Um, and also, someone asked me one time, they were like, why do you like the number 21? What, what is it with 21? I don't know. I'm just trying to be a little bit different than, you know, some people do, you know, just whole numbers. So I'm deciding to go with 21. And I know it can be a long list, and I'm going to try to keep it short and run through this uh, relatively quickly. Uh, but folks can always pause the video and so on and so forth. Now, just before we dive into this list, two things that I do want to bring up is one, uh, is that, uh, what was it? Uh, now, now, see, now I forgot. Anyways, one that is in the back of my head is tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, I will be doing a live stream with Mark uh, for our, you know, wake up uh, with Rolling in the Gray. Uh, we kind of bounce between each other's channels, so that'll be, a, last week it was on his channel, this week it'll be on my channel at 11 a.m. Tuesday Eastern Standard Time, uh, and that will be a live show with us. We kind of go through current events and some other odds and ends and things like that, and it's a pretty good time. And I'm trying to think of uh, what else there was I had to say, but I can't remember, so we're just going to go ahead and dive into it. Other than that, if you can, please smash that like button. Uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm. All right, so enough of the hodgepodge and me rambling on. Let's go ahead and dive into this list. All right, so first on my list, and you guys know I like to keep my list up running so I can stay on topic or stay on task or, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, whenever you're going to do food storage or, you know, stuff like that, one key place to start if you're going to be prepping food is five gallon buckets uh, for food storage you know uh, these are a must have for bulk and dry food uh, things that you want to store in these buckets make sure that they are food grade uh, buckets and that they have the gasket and lids that come with them this is very important because some people will grab buckets and if you, if you flip open the lid in the bucket you can see that this rubber gasket is and there's a lot of places you can shop for these five gallon buckets uh, but just make sure that they're food grade uh, and they have that gasket inside the liner so that it seals well and then of course you can take steps beyond that to seal the buckets and uh, there's a lot of great information on actual people showing this uh, process and maybe I'll do one down the road as well. Uh, number two uh, and this goes with the buckets is mylar bags. You know you want to combine these with these five gallon buckets uh, to store your food along with oxygen, absor oxygen absorbers if I can say that correctly. <laughs> Uh, you just want to drop, you know, a few of those in there uh, in your Mylar bag. So, you know, you get your five-gallon, then you get your Mylar. You put the food that you're going to store in there. You throw a few oxygen absorbers. And there's, of course, there's a list uh, that you can look up for, you know, the amount of food that you have in there, uh, let's say, for five gallons. And it'll tell you how many oxygen absorbers in there or the size of the oxygen absorber uh, to put in there. And then once it's filled up, you want to seal it up. You can do something as simple as, let's say, a flat iron that, you know, let's say if you have a wife or a daughter, uh, or if you're just a single man and you want to prep things, just buy a flat iron and you can seal those uh, Mylar bags. Put that lid on there and then some folks will go ahead and duct tape it uh, around the lid itself. Write what's in the bucket and also date it. Uh, that would be very helpful so that you don't have like 25 buckets and you're like, okay, what is in some of these buckets? And then you also have the date on there. All right, so number three, we're going to start into our foods. Uh, number three uh, is sugar. Uh, now here it is. Sugar you can store indefinitely in an airtight situation. Sugar is useful for all sorts of things, you know, from cooking uh, as well as, you know, for comfort foods. You know, it's always nice to have comfort foods during a shift event. You know, some of you folks ask what shift is, but you guys should know by now it's uh, crap hits the fan. Um, so that's what I mean when I say shift. Uh, and now here's a key thing uh, with sugar. You don't want to add oxygen absorbers with sugar because it'll turn it into it'll turn it into a big solid rock uh, because it takes all the oxygen out there so you just want to you know store you know in an airtight container uh, and sure can pretty much dang near store indefinitely all right number four uh, I have rice it's simple 
it's cheap and it's really easy to store. Rice is very, very easy to store, specifically in the five gallon buckets. Um, let me see here, but I have a notation because I've noticed uh, and I've tried this myself and it does happen. So white rice is the way to go when you store rice. Now you can store brown rice, but it doesn't have the same shelf life as, you know, other, you know, as white rice does because of the natural oils in there and anything with that moisture in there is, it's just the natural oils in there doesn't, it uh, can create issues down the road. I don't want to go too far into it, but just white rice, if you want to start, you know, store rice is the best way to go. All right, number five, honey. Um, honey is, to me, one of my favorite things to store because it can double as multiple uses. Um, honey can pretty much last forever, um, and it's 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 a nice natural substitute for sugar, uh, and also you can use it for things in medicinal aspects, for you know antibiotics and colds, uh, sore throats, and energy booster. Um, what else do I have here? Um, as well as treatment for burns and wounds and stuff like that. And now honey stored in glass jars is the best way to preserve it. Uh, it's, it prevents it from crystallizing, but if you ever have some honey stored and it crystallizes real honey, uh, you can put it in a nice, let's say, you know, take a jar, you know, you can put that in hot water and whatnot, and it'll reconstitute that honey. All right, number six, uh, salt. Salt is another valuable asset for your food preps. Uh, it's an essential store, storage item, and salt comes in handy for all kinds of things, you know, because without salt, technically, you'll die. And I know some of you say, well, you know, my doctor tells me to cut back on salt. <laughs> I understand that everybody has food uh, restrictions, but in a true scenario, salt comes in very handy uh, because you can use it for flavoring. Uh, you can use it for preserving foods, um, as well as, you know, salt has minerals and electrolytes that your body needs. Uh, and it also salt will also can uh, be a great barter item uh, if you store enough salt as well, especially if you know you can't go to your normal grocery stores and things have gone into a chaotic situation. Uh, and I put in here a, a a thing that it says uh, estimates are about four or five pounds per person per year. Uh, so if you have a family of five, uh, you want to times that by you know four to five, so anywhere from twenty to twenty five pounds for a family of five. And so on and so forth just to kind of give you an idea how much salt maybe you should store if you're new to prepping all right number seven is oats another staple that is super cheap and easy uh, and it does have an actual 30-year storage options uh, oats are perfect for the prepper because it requires um, only boiled water to reconstitute that uh, and if you know what I mean I don't know if that's pro the proper word I'm looking for <coughs> but all you need is water to prepare oats uh, you know, you can also add, you know, let's say some cinnamon or a little bit of the sugar or honey, uh, which which already should be in your food preps, and uh, it'll make a nice breakfast treat for you folks in the morning. Uh, it also, oats can also help control blood sugar and stuff like cholesterol. And also, uh, as doing my research, oats can also double as feed for animals. Um, so I thought that was a benefit if you have livestock. Uh, so you can use some of your oats if you have enough oats stored. Uh, that you can use it for feed for your animals if you happen to run out or, you know, whatever that situation may be. All right, number eight, beans and legumes. Uh, beans and rice combos makes one of the best long-term sto long storages. And the reason I say this is, okay, so rice is a good starch or carb, and beans have the protein. Um, so combining rice and beans together, you know, packs a nice meal for folks. And I know some people are like, well, I'm going to get tired of rice and beans. Well, if you're starving, rice and beans will be very, very handy. Um, and beans, you know, kind of is, is, is not the perfect, but it's a good substitute, uh, you know, for me. Uh, this is why a lot of folks in a lot of cultures eat rice and beans. Um, you know, you can use pinto, navy, uh, black beans, lima beans. Uh, they all make good choices, you know what I mean? And like I've said before in previous videos, you know, look at what your family likes. If they prefer black beans over pinto beans versus navy beans or lima beans, you know, kind of see what everybody likes and, and, and prep those. All right, so now we're going to dive into wheat. Number nine is going to be wheat. Um, I feel wheat is another must-have. Uh, now, there's a difference in wheat because you have soft grains and then you have hard grains. Soft grains can be stuff like barley, uh, hulled oats, pearled oats, rolled oats, and so on and so forth. Now, which are great, um, but uh, hard grains are usually a better option for your emergency food supply uh, when stored correctly. Uh, you know, there's a diverse group of hard grains that you can store, anything from, let's say, buckwheat, corn, flax, millet, uh, 
hard red wheat, hard white wheat, and white white wheat. Man, that was a tongue twister. Uh, and the list goes on. Uh, they're, they're pretty much the hard uh, hard grains are they're best for long term storage. Uh, if you're using some of the short term stuff, you can use you know like I said you know stuff like you know barley and and rolled oats and whatnot. Uh, but just you know, do your research uh, when it comes to any of this. That's one thing I like to tell a lot of folks when it comes to storing foods and uh, so on and so forth. All right, moving on to number ten, flour. Uh, flour also should be you know included in your long-term storage. However, if you're uh, you know if you're storing grains, uh, let's say let me see, hmm. if you're if you're storing grains or beans, you know you can use those to grind up and kind of make you know flour if that gives you. Uh, Anything, but then you know you make sure you. you let me see. What is it called? A uh, what is it called? A mortar and a pedestal. Uh, that's like the 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 more simplest simplistic way. Or if you have some sort of grain mill or whatnot. But you know, you get you guys get what I'm saying when it comes to flour. But if you want to store flour, uh, it, it's it's another thing that you should add to your uh, prepper pantry. Hopefully, I, I went through that correctly. I'm trying to move quick because I don't want to make the video super long, but it probably will be. I am going to throw a bonus one at the end of this uh, 21 thing. I always like to throw something, a bonus at the end of it. All right, where was I? Number 11, powdered milk. Uh, you know, powdered milk is, 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 uh, is recommended to, you know, you can store up to 16 pounds per person uh, per year. So if you're storing, you know, if you're, going to, if you're going to prep powdered milk, think about that average, 16 pounds of powdered milk per person per year. So if you're looking, you know, long-term goals, most people want to at least have a year uh, supply of food. Uh, and that's why I keep on uh, defaulting to the, the one-year mark. Uh, and make sure it's not instant uh, milk, but it's powdered milk, because there's instant milk and there's powdered milk. So you want to make sure that you differentiate between the two. So again, number 11 is going to be powdered milk. Number 12, pasta. All right, so uh, pasta is, you know, it's a staple. A lot of people have, you know, dry, you know, pastas, you know, I mean dry pastas, you know, like, you know, spaghetti, uh, bow tie pastas, whatever pasta that you, that you, that you want to use, you know what I mean? Uh, and they're usually good for about two years, you know, depending on the way you store it. Uh, this this is kind of a, more of a short-term food option, uh, but to get the longer to longer shelf life out of pasta, uh, you'll need to seal it up in, like I said, mylar bags and whatnot. And uh, but just to note that pasta does not have much protein in it, so you know you want to you know it, it'll fill you up, but it doesn't have like a ton of proteins. It's, it's all carbs basically. So you know. I'm trying to what I what I'm getting out of this is is to look at what is the best options for you and your family, uh, and that's why I kind of fall back to that rice and beans combo because the rice is my carbs and the beans is my protein and whatnot. So, but uh, pasta is, is another good prep uh, to prep because it will fill you up, and and you'll get energy out of that out of, the, out of those carbs as they process through your uh, through your system. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna prep pasta. I added number 13 is powdered cheese. Uh, I mean, be honestly, I mean, to me personally, I mean, who doesn't like cheese? <laughs> I love cheese. Uh, but anyways, uh, powdered cheese makes great for long-term storage. Uh, you know, you want to buy the dry powdered kind of cheese, and you can use, plate, you know, like Augustin Farms and some of those folks, they have dry cheese or dry powdered cheese and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, in the number 10 cans, you guys should be familiar with the number 10 cans by Augustin's Farms. If not, drop a comment below, and I will answer that for you. Uh, and they usually have a shelf life of about 10 years, you know what I mean? So, but remember to store your, uh, if you store macaroni and, and, you, and then you have the powdered cheese, then you, you know, you got mac and cheese. So who doesn't love mac and cheese as a comfort food? Uh, basically is what I'm trying to draw out of this. <laughs> All right, so number 14 is peanut butter. You know, it's, it's a high in plant protein. Uh, it's packed with nutrients. Uh, you know, peanut butter is great to stock up on. And I, matter of fact, I just got a deal on powdered peanut butter. Um, I should just get up and go grab it off the shelf over there and show you guys. But then that would, you know, be weird because this is not a live and I need to complete the video. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so... And when you, the reason I chose the powdered option for peanut butter is because it has a, a longer shelf life. And, and then, you know, I know this is going to sound weird, but, you know, like the Jiffy peanut butter is going to be a lot better than the natural peanut butters. Uh, and that being said, it's because uh, of the oils in there and whatnot, and you'll see it separate. And there's, like I said, I can go really deep into that. But like I said, peanut butter is, is just a great, you know, thing to store. But, you know, well, all those oils basically... What I'm trying to say, Gray, is uh, 10 to 12 months. 
10 to 12 months, it'll, it'll go rancid. So that's why I use the peanut butter powder or the dry, you know, that you can reconstitute with water. Um, I just feel it's a better option for peanut butter. That being said, number 15, freeze dried options. Now there's so many, many, many freeze dried options and you know, freeze dried options, you just add water, uh, you know, let's say hot water to reconstitute a meal. Let's say, you know, you got, you know, Augustine's Farms, uh, you got Legacies, you got Nutrient Survival, uh, you have Ready Wise, Mountain House, and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of different options, you know, when it comes to freeze dried foods. Uh, and they usually give you one of the longest shelf lives possible. Uh, and, but this is more of the pricier option. Uh, but there, like I said, there's a lot of great companies that offer, offer freeze dried options. What I suggest if you're going to get into freeze dried foods is grab a couple of, you know, of their products, test a few of them, and see which one tastes better to you. Uh, if you feel it's very bland or, you know, it tastes weird or whatnot, you know, so kind of, you know, play around with it right now. I'm using Augustine's Farms, but I'm diving into a few other ones like Backpacker's Pantry and Legacy and also Nutrient Survival. Uh, I'm playing around with some of those options as well. All right, number 16, baking powder, baking soda. Uh, Definitely a must-have for long-term storage, as there's many, many, many uses for it. You know, like cooking agents, uh, you can use it double. At, you can use uh, baking uh, baking soda as you can use it as toothpaste. There you go to brush your teeth, man. Uh, also a household cleaner, and then also I've used uh, baking soda in the past uh, for heartburn. You know, you take a little bit of baking soda and water and guzzle that down, and yeah, you'll you'll burp, but you'll feel so much better. And other than, than trying it yourself next time you have heartburn, take a little bit of that baking soda, you know, a couple teaspoons, and mix it in with water. Drink that down, and you'll be shocked how well baking soda works uh, with uh, heartburn. All right, number 17, and this is a must-have for me. Uh, may not be for you, but it is for me. Number 17 is coffee. Uh, <laughs> and when it comes to storing coffee, you kind of want to go with the beans or, you know, the freeze-dried options when it comes to storing coffee. Uh, you know, it gives water a nice taste, at least for me. Uh, it increases energy. It increases alertness. Um, what else do I have here? It also makes a great bartering item. Uh, and it's just when you wake up in the morning, it's just nice to have that coffee. Uh, like I said, if you can, you can buy the whole green beans. Now you're like, what do you mean green beans? Uh, just the green beans are the best option for long-term storage if you can get them and then roast them yourself. Uh, and like I said, I could do a whole video on each one of these things, but we're kind of just going through this list. But number 17 is coffee. Now, if, you, if you're not a coffee drinker, number 18 is tea. Uh, tea bags, as long as you, when you have tea bags, if you vacuum seal these uh, to keep the moisture away, tea bags can you know, store for quite some time as well because uh, you want to keep moisture away from your tea bags. Uh, and you can, you can always use, uh, you know, like let's say the natural tea bags, like what do they call them? What is the word for it? I know you can think about it. Great. Come on, get it. Um, the, the loose leaf cut tea. There you go. Or if you have a garden, think about things that you can grow as tea. Let's say like lemongrass and uh, you can use pine needles, uh, dandelions, so on and so forth. So you can make your own teas. You can take these dandelions and, you know, make your teas out of them and seal them up and, you know, into a vacuum seal and then store them uh, for long-term usage. So number 18 <laughs> is tea. Sorry, once I get started on some of these things, I just want to go deeper into it, but I know I'm doing a list, so I don't want to go too far into it where I get off track. Um, so my apologies if I go on these tangents or these, you know, little side things here. Um, all right, so moving on to uh, number 19. We're almost there. Number 19, cornstarch. Cornstarch pretty much will last forever, stored in a cool, dry place, you know, a Apart from being, you know, something to thicken sauces with, uh, it's good for heat rash, it's good for sunburns, uh, deodorant, uh, shampoo for pets. Uh, so cornstarch is just very, very, very handy as a food prep, and it's my number 19. All right, so moving on to number 20. Vinegar slash apple cider vinegar, either or, uh, you know, can serve multiple purposes as well. Uh, they're great for cleaning and cooking. Uh, you know, there should be a bottle of vinegar uh, in every pepper spray. Several bottles, to be honest with you. Uh, that's how I look at it. And, drink, and drinking an apple cider uh, vinegar mix with water also makes it great. Uh, you know, there, people say they use it for diets, but it's you know, it's like an energy tonic. Uh, you know, some people, you know, because you don't want to just 
I know some people will, will say differently, but you don't want to just drink straight apple cider vinegar. It can lead to some uh, damage to your esophagus. So dilute it with water, and then if you want to consume it that way, that's that's the best way to do that. But again, number 20 is vinegar or apple cider vinegar, as it's known for some folks. Uh, it does have a little bit of a better taste to it. But, you know, up to you. But again, number 20 is vinegar. All right, number 21, and you guys have seen me. I, 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 I prepped this a lot, and I know all you folks don't feel the same way. Uh, but uh, so canned tuna and veggies, and I'm, I'm saying tuna because I, I talk about tuna a lot, and people like they don't like tuna. I love tuna. It's a solid protein, um, and it stores for quite some time. Most of the tuna I buy, I usually get about three years out of them, and I keep them on a rotation. But anyways, canned tuna, veggies, canned meats, things like that. When it comes to canned foods, uh, it's just one of the most easiest ways to start your prepping pantry uh, and prepping food in general. Uh, so, you know, next time you go to the store, if there's a buy one, get one, you know, grab one for what you're going to use. If you're going to use it for just your normal pantry and then grab the other and put it in your prepper pantry. And you will see over time it will build up. Uh, what I go, I go a step above and beyond, you know, because the, the expiration dates can be kind of small on there. So I take a black marker. I write on top of that can the expiration date. Um, and... Uh, just so it's easier to see and visible and to keep that rotation. Um, you know, like I said, and then having the veggies, you know, you can get canned corn and asparagus and green beans. You, you can do a lot of canned different stuff. I, I don't have to go through all that, but, you know, you can do canned tuna, uh, beans. There's, there's a multitude of, of canned things. You can buy them in large things, the large cans if you like to. Now, there's ways to tell when things go bad, you know, if there's a dent in the can or if the can is like swelled up or whatnot, uh, then it might be bad. Um, but, you know, do some research when it comes to anything like this when you're storing any type of food products because you don't want to get botulism and so on and so forth. So, like I said, when it comes to everything, please do your research. Now, that being said, those are the 21 items that I feel are, you know, my list of helpful food preps for new preppers. Now, I do have the bonus one that I'm going to add here in a second. Um, but like I said, like I said before, with my list, uh, I would like for you folks to add stuff that you would add to this list because I want to hear from you folks because there's things that I'm probably missing. Uh, so that being said, uh, my bonus, bonus thing that I hear is spices uh, because there's even your freeze-dried foods or other foods that you have or your rice or whatever, you want to add some spices to it just to bring some flavor to it. And the reason I'm saying spices as a bonus uh, because most spices, if left in the original jar, will last one to two years on average. Uh, before they go bad uh, and, and there there's ways to prolong that you know with spices uh, you can prolong them by vacuum sealing them but like I said if you're buying in a jar and you're sealing in that jar just rotate your spices also if you have a garden and you're growing spices let's say you know peppers or whatever the spice that you prefer you know you can grow these spices or make these spices out of your garden if you're at that point where you're self-sufficient and you have a garden growing or grow a herb garden or whatnot but anyways just to break down spices real quick uh, whole spices or whole herb leaves uh, or whole flowers usually on the average can last one to two years. Uh, seeds and barks can last about two to three years. Roots two to three years. Um, you see ground spices and herb leaves about a year and ground roots about two years. Uh, and like I said if you want to explore you know storing your spices you know outside of let's say you go you grow your own spices and you dry these spices out uh, vacuum seal them uh, or if you have if you want to take them out of the the jars that they're in you know that when you buy them at the store if they're in plastic or whatnot you want to put them in a glass jar which is the best option um, is take that glass jar and you can buy one of the vacuum seal lids and vacuum seal these uh, spices uh, and that should give you a little bit more life out of it but also like I said date everything uh, and like I said, when it comes to whatever spice that you happen to be, uh, you know, preserving or, you know, using it for for, for, uh, for food storage, make sure you do your research on the longevity of that spice and proper storage. When it comes to everything, cool, dark, dry places are the best options, you know, and look at your temps, you know what I mean? You don't want to be too hot, uh, you know, because that draws humidity and moisture and whatnot. Anyways, folks, I hope this helps some of you folks out there. Uh, look forward to reading your comments uh, and what other folks had to add to this. Uh, I hope at least I help one person. That's usually the goal by doing these videos. That some of you new preppers or even advanced preppers out there will grab something and be like, wow, I didn't know that or this was helpful. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me on this list. And like I said, again, tomorrow at Tuesday, I'll be on at 11 a.m. live, me and Mark doing Wake Up with Rolling in Gray. And then I have also tomorrow my Tuesday night uh, live stream, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and uh, 
the guest is up in the air, but I will uh, once I get all you know ironed out, I will let you guys know uh, in regards to that. <laughs> that being said, this is Gray Man, and I want to wish everybody a great day. God bless, and uh, I'll see you guys on the rebound. Take care now.